Hello everybody. Um, so this is a video mostly for the folks who weren't able to be with us in class uh, yesterday. So yesterday was November the 4th. It was a Thursday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what day it is. Um, but we went over the last of the surah that we are reading for this semester, so that's from the Quran. We talked about sort of the poetics of that piece. We reviewed some of the information about sort of the um, emergence of the idea of Europe during the Middle Ages. We talked about how the Middle Ages really only is a term that applies to Europe because nobody else was in the middle, like in between things, like, you know. Um, I'll try and record a separate video kind of recapping my lecture notes and sort of reminding folks what was contributed in discussion. If you have notes from yesterday and you are willing to post them for the class, that would be great. Um, I know what I had written down to talk to you about, uh, but there's there are always things that I miss, like in terms of like you know question and answer kind of stuff. Um, so I don't want to overlook anything. Um, so all of that kind of over here. I also have some written notes to post for you for the folks for the folks who are like not really into the YouTube format. Um, personally, I prefer reading notes anyway. So there's that. But then the other thing that we did is. Um, Toward the end of the class period, I recited, for the folks who were able to attend, um, just the opening lines from the Exordium, the beginning, uh, to Beowulf, um, in hopes of giving you sort of a taste of like oral tradition, as opposed to written poetry. Um, and that distinction between oral and written poetry uh, becomes kind of significant as we transition from the Quran, which is very much a written Set of like the, sur the surah that we read are very much written poems. Um, we, we transition tra transition to the Middle Ages. I'm trying to say, and with Beowulf we see um, a text that was oral for quite a while before it was written down, and that matters in terms of stylistics and stuff. So, um, so I'm going to try and uh, reproduce my recitation for those of you who were not able to attend in the classroom and. Uh, you know, um, please remember that I'm an English instructor, not a uh, bard. So it is what it is, kind of thing. Um, all right. So, the Spear Danes in days gone by, and the kings who ruled them had courage and greatness. We have heard of those princes' heroic campaigns. There was Shield, Sheafson, a scourge of many tribes, a wrecker of mead benches rampaging amongst foes. This terror of the hall troops had come far. A foundling to start with, he would flourish later on as his powers waxed and his worth was proved. In the end, each clan on the outlying coast beyond the whale road would have to yield to him and begin to pay tribute. That was one good king. Afterwards, a boy child was born to shield, a cub in the yard, a comfort sent by God to that nation. He knew what they had told, the long times and troubles they'd come through without a leader. So the Lord of life, the glorious almighty, made that man renowned. Shield had fathered a famous son. Baal's name was known throughout the north. And a young prince must be prudent like that, giving freely while his father lives, so that afterwards, in age, when fighting starts, steadfast companions will stand by him and hold the line. Behavior that's admired is the path to power among people everywhere. 